Hi, welcome to another Hair Medic podcast. Uh, I've been asked a question by somebody about male pattern hair loss. I didn't think it would be long before somebody commented and said, uh, what's your advice? So it's a huge subject. So uh, I'm going to break it down uh, as much as I possibly can and make it concise and easy to understand. If there's anything that I've missed out, please comment on the uh, social platform that this is on uh, with your question and I will get back to you. So um, so firstly, um, what is it? Male pattern hair loss. Uh, it is a, a genetically predisposed condition. It is part of your DNA or blueprint. It affects um, the vast majority of men and it amounts to 90% of all male forms of hair loss that I see in the clinic. Um, it affects the uh, the crown area, the frontal vertex and the forelock area of, of men. It's, um, and in those areas, hormone receptors are bound to uh, the individual hair follicles. And when testosterone passes through this hormone receptor called 5-alpha reductase, it turns into a more potent version called dihydrotestosterone or DHT. So you'll see a lot of products out there which says anti-DHT, which is anti-dihydrotestosterone. Um, so we'll come to what works and what doesn't later on in this uh, podcast. So this area is classed as the non-permanent area and this area is classed as the permanent area. So that means that this area has most of the receptors and most of the uh, the effects of the DHT and that's why that hair miniaturizes over hair cycle so the hair will grow die and fall out and the next one will be slightly finer slightly thinner and grow for slightly less time so where does it come from uh, the vast majority of men exhibit this form of hair loss to some degree or another 90 percent of the men that come into my clinic suffer from male pattern hair loss um, and even very mild versions such as this if you can see my frontal hairline i've got like little gaps and it's eroding and and sort of these recessions that is classed as a genetic form of thinning um, it's an autosomal dominant gene of variable penetrance and expressivity which means that the autosomal part of it means that it is passed direct to that person and then direct to their descendants and direct to their descendants regardless of sex so you can get it from your mother's side or your father's side. When people say it skips a generation, what they mean is that that person in the middle that it skipped didn't exhibit those genes as strongly as their parents. So they did have the gene. They passed it on to you um, or your siblings, um, but they didn't exhibit it the way that other people did in the family. So variable penetrance is how far in the family it um, exhibits a, an influence. Who in your family suffers from genetic hair loss? Um, and of course, male, uh, female pattern hair loss is exactly the same as male pattern hair loss, but in the female form. But I will do a separate uh, video podcast about female pattern hair loss. So going back to males, um, the variable penetrance and expressivity. Uh, so the, the penetrance is how far it is in the family. Expressivity is how you individually uh, express it yourself. So you can look at your siblings and your father and your grandfathers to see where you may end up on that scale, but it's not written in stone. So the son doesn't have to replicate exactly what the father looks like. So don't worry about um, going down that path absolutely 100% verbatim if your father is completely bald and you're worried about that as well it's a possibility but it's not written in stone so um, the scale that people look at is called the Hamilton Norwood scale and I'll try and insert something here to uh, to allow you to have a look at that so that's where um, hair surgeons and trichologists tend to pigeonhole or categorize where you are in that process but that doesn't mean to say that it will accelerate or stay where it is. Um, it's a genetic predisposition, so it is part of your blueprint. And of course, there is this. Uh, there are things that can exacerbate genetic influences: exercise, um, your general health and well-being, poor nutrition. Um, so those things can accelerate genetic factors in the body, but it can't influence it 
um, ex exclusively. So just be careful when you're looking at purely genetics or purely outside influences, usually is a mixture of both. So now we'll come on to the question which I was asked, which was, is there anything that I can do with it or what do I recommend? Um, there is a huge amount of um, information and products for uh, male pattern hair loss. And as you probably guessed, not much of it works. Um, just to eliminate some of the, the more fluffy stuff, um, there isn't a nutritional supplement or a herbal supplement which is strong enough, which has been proven effective to male pattern hair loss. The problem is that um, there is information out there to say that things like saw palmetto and zinc have an effect on reducing DHT. Uh, but the amount of DHT that it reduces by is quite low and therefore probably wouldn't have a huge uh, difference or it wouldn't have a huge effect on the amount that um, it affects male pattern hair loss. So, there, so it's, there is a big difference between a company proving or a scientific paper saying that this product reduces DHT and then you taking it and then it's reducing DHT enough to have an effect. So, sorry, I've just got a, uh, a ping message, sorry. So we can instantly eliminate saw palmetto, zinc, biotin, pumpkin seeds as a cure or a active treatment for male pattern hair loss. These things may help in some way, shape or form with some people, but the information which is out there is um, minimal. So I wouldn't uh, recommend anything like that as a treatment for, um, for male pattern hair loss or genetic hair loss. The two treatments which have been uh, medically tried and tested are minoxidil and finasteride, and both are relatively effective in their own right. Uh, minoxidil is a topical treatment, usually seen under the guise of Regain, but other uh, companies do make it. Um, you can get that over the counter. It's in a 5% foam mix now, um, and you apply that twice a day, and it Minoxidil tends to do is elongate the growth phase of hair, so it doesn't go into the shedding phase as quickly. What we do know is the miniaturization happens when the hair turns over, so it goes from a, a growth phase to a shedding phase, and then it miniaturizes. So if you can elongate that growth phase out, then you will retain your hair for longer. Um, it's not very good at DHT resistance, in all honesty. Um, so that's why most people don't seem to have a huge effect with minoxidil. But it's a good first medication if you are um, young, if you're in your teens or in your late teens, 18 plus, um, or in your early 20s, and you're concerned about thinning hair. Um, it doesn't have very much side effects. It may make your scalp feel a little bit itchy, so just use a medicated shampoo for that. Um, but it's a good first, uh, a, a first opener to preventing hair from thinning quickly. Um, the other medication, which I said was finasteride, sometimes called Propecia. Now that is a oral medication, and that is a type two DHT blocker. So it is very effective at blocking the enzyme, which causes testosterone to go to uh, turn into dihydrotestosterone. All well and good, but it does come with uh, side effects. Um, Two percent of people that suffer f uh, that go on to it suffer from erectile dysfunction, loss of libido, or depression. Um, so there's no real way to know whether you're going to suffer from those things. You've just got to try it. And as long as you're over eighteen and that you haven't had any history of those problems in the past, so any mental history, um, any types of erectile dysfunction problems, then you can either speak to uh, a, a, a medical, medically qualified person to actually go onto that medication. So finasteride is probably, at the moment, is the gold standard of medications out there for uh, male pattern hair loss. It has a bad rap at the moment, and there's a lot of people that are talking about post-finasteride syndrome, uh, which is people that have had long-term effects from going onto this. Um, at the moment, there is no clinical evidence to say that post-finasteride syndrome exists. So we are keeping a, a, a close eye on this, but all the information points to 
um, these uh, these people having uh, problems either in the past or it's just coincidental. Now, other things that you can do about it are low level laser light therapy or PRP. Um, low level laser light therapy is very interesting. You can get different forms of devices and head headsets that go onto the scalp, and these um, are set at a specific wavelength. Um, which is 655 nanometers usually, and they fire these uh, lights into the scalp and that stimulates the mitochondria of this hair and it stimulates the cells to grow thicker and faster. So the theory is very good. Um, it doesn't come with any side effects, um, but I would recommend that you use a home device. I don't particularly advise going to hair clinics because the device that you use at the hair clinic has the same type of output as the uh, device that you can use at home. So there's they do have more powerful machines, but power doesn't equal greater efficacy. So low level laser light therapy is interesting and I will do another bod, uh, a video podcast on that alone because it's a huge subject and it's very interesting. Uh, PRP, I don't know very much about in all honesty. Um, some people think it's the next best thing. Some people say it's about as useful as minoxidil. Um, but it is uh, when people take blood out of your arm, um, they spin it around the centrifuge, they uh, take out the proteins from the white blood cells, or separate with the white blood cells, the red blood cells and the proteins, and then they inject the proteins back into the scalp and those proteins migrate to the hair follicles and start repairing them. So, and that makes the hair cells grow better than they did. So the theory again is there and I promise I will do my research and I will get another podcast to you very, very shortly. So that is basic. That is my basic 101 of male pattern hair loss. Um, the only two things that I would suggest are minoxidil and finasteride, very boring. I know people are looking all over the internet for a new cure, but it's not there yet. If you want to add on anything, then low level laser light therapy will be my uh, very, very close third choice. Minoxidil low level laser light therapy is very good in combination and finasteride and minoxidil is very good in, com in combination as well. So try to um, be a little bit more savvy with what you're um, looking for. I know you're looking for cures, I know you're looking for the next big thing, but at the moment, those are the main things. Please comment, share, like, ask me questions. I've probably missed something out, so I will just go back over this as and when. Um, so, and thank you for listening.